continuing on now with Connor Pay, BYU team captain. And Connor, Reiner Swanson, he was not a member of the team a season ago, but he spoke with DJ and PK not too long ago and had a very inter interesting quote. Now, it had a, both a positive and a negative part to it. So the first part he said, and that was a great thing, is you know Reiner as well as anybody, Connor, because he plays tight end. He's right there with you guys in the offensive line meetings. It feels like half the time. He said, we're not freaking messing around. That was the first part of his quote. But then he said, after that, he said, last season I heard that some guys were showing up late to meetings last year, and that may have contributed to some of the struggles they had a season ago. And then he added, we're not dealing with that anymore. We're, we're not freaking messing around is what he re reiterated. You talked about some pushback you got a season ago from the offensive line room. Is, is what Reiner is talk is what Reiner referring to what you were talking about as well as that lineup? Yeah, yeah, I think there was, I think there was, um, I think it was a mix of a few things. Um, but no, that was that was definitely part of it. Just lack of discipline as a team, guys being late to things, missing lifts, missing meetings, um, you know, and then uh, and then unfortunately not not uh not being enabled to hold them accountable the way that you need to to have a successful organization um and that and that happened in multiple position groups to be honest with you and uh you know so i think there's definitely some truth to that you know and i think uh right just being on the team now Reiner's Reiner's heard some of the stories from last year i'm sure and um yeah we that's not something we've had to deal with this year it's just it's it's not a part of the culture of this team, you know, and it's uh, and I think the accountability of this team and and what we've been enabled to do as leaders to hold people accountable. But to be honest with you, we haven't had to do a ton of it. Okay. You know, there there hasn't had to be a ton of uh, you know ripping people or or punishing people for things and stuff like that because this team this team is pretty bought in um, and. You know, that's uh, makes our lives a lot easier, honestly, as captains and as leaders and and makes me optimistic for for the outlook of the season. Well, it's good to hear. I, I The term I meant to use is like slippage. And that, that seems to be have been the case. But it's, it's good to hear that that's rectified. And how have you when you have had to correct guys, you, you you've talked about this on the podcast all offseason long, the work you've done with this offensive line, demanding accountability from them. Is it just been essentially encouraging guys? Hey, you know what slipped last year. Let's not let that happen. Has that kind of been the message to everybody in the program? Yeah, and I think it's I think it's one of our responsibilities as leaders to know our uh, you know to know our teammates well enough to know how to approach them in those situations. Because there's some guys on the team I can go right up to directly in the moment in front of people. Doesn't matter. And basically lay into them and be like, you know, that's not what we do here. Like, do things the right way, and they'll be totally cool with that. Okay. There are other guys where if I tried to do that, it would it would fracture our relationship, right? And that's and there are other times where it's like, okay, and just be like, okay, man, like you know, you know the standard. Let's do it, and not, um, you know, you always have you have to at attack the problem, not the person. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think that's that's a big thing. Um, as I've matured as a leader and as the, the strength staff actually put all of the leaders through a leadership seminar course this off season, um, which was, which was really helpful. Um, and you know, you always want to, you always want to address the good and the bad, right? So always praising people for doing things well, but also addressing the things they don't do well. Um, and I think that's one thing we've also gotten much better at is it used to just be constantly, you know, Earlier on, it would just be, especially last year, just, you know, me and Tyler or other guys who are more vocal, just yelling at people all the time, doing things, just always addressing the negative. But we weren't we weren't very good at reinforcing the positive. We were, we were always focusing. And maybe it's because we were, we were losing games and things weren't going well. I had my own issues in my own position room and all that stuff. And um but I think we've matured a lot as leaders in that sense, and to where to where the the off season captains and those guys, you know, we didn't we didn't have to be in that situation as much, and it was a lot more of just reinforcing all the good things guys were doing, you know. To where now, if someone does screw up or does slip up, I can go to them and be like, "Come on, bro, I've watched you. I know what you can do. I've watched you do this fifteen times before. Like, right, come on, let's lock in. I know what you're capable of." 
and and it can be, it can be much more of an empowering moment versus a moment where you have to tear somebody down. Um, and so I think uh, I think we've had a lot of those moments this off season with a lot of of different leaders and a lot of different players, guys who, you know, took major steps forward because a leader addressed them the right way, and in a way that was personal to them. Well, and. Kalani's talked about this one, him, him wanting this to be a player run program. And that speaks, I think, directly to what he wants from you guys. He wants you guys peer to peer rather than coach to athlete to go and correct the issue before a coach has to step in. And obviously there are times in your room that TJ Woods is going to step in and every other position group's got their coach that will step in if need be. But ideally, I think they like the fact that say you at the offensive line, if there's a guy who screws up, you can point to him directly and say, Hey, you know what you did wrong. Let's get it fixed here. I know how well you can play. And I think that actually has a more, and I don't claim to be a psychologist in any way, shape, or form, but what I understand of the human psyche is that's going to reinforce positive behavior rather than having to harp on that negative behavior. Exactly. Exactly. Now, uh, with regards to this upcoming game, season opener, Southern Illinois, I know it's an FCS game, but this is an FCS team that's unlike many you guys have probably played in your time there. They're ranked 11th in the preseason poll. They were seemingly a play away, it felt like, a season ago from going into the semifinals of the FCS playoffs. Got a very strong defensive reputation. What do you know about the Salukis? What can you let our fans know about them? I mean... Individually, in terms of individual players, I don't know a ton because they were they had a lot of changes on defense with transfer portal and stuff like that. I think they don't, they only have three returning starters on defense, um, and so from an individual perspective, knowledge is a little limited. But in terms of what their defense does and what they do, you know, they're really variable on defense, um, and you know they run they run multiple different fronts. You know, a lot of different type of pressures that they can bring, especially when they're running, you know, that, that three, three stack defense, you know, that's a lot of, it's a lot of different areas. You can bring a lot of different people. Um, and, you know, I think uh, they, they move and slant and do a lot of that stuff a lot, which can, can make things a little difficult, you know, on an offensive line. Um, but really looking forward to the challenge with them. Cause yeah, they've, they've played up to some, in some big games the last couple of years. Um, and you know, we know that they're going to be up and excited to play us here. So, um, really looking forward to playing them, uh, and getting a chance to, uh, you know, get, get our season going and, and prove, you know, or I guess not prove, but rather show the improvements that we've made this off season, but no, definitely a high quality opponent. I have a lot of respect for how hard they play on defense. Um, and you know, for what they're able to accomplish with, you know, seemingly less talented players. Right. And, uh, uh, they, they, they've had great defenses for years now, years. And so with all the movement, all the variability, it makes for like some, some dirty runs. I think I may have mentioned that earlier in the presser this morning, but you know, that's, that's kind of to be expected with a defense like that when they move that much, you know, just, there's going to be some dirty runs. They're going to get us sometimes. It's going to be a one or two yard gain, right? And then, but I, I think we're going to be able to catch them outside of the gap sometimes, and hopefully be able to move the line of scrimmage and you know and, and pop a few. Has it been talked about how their head coach Nick Hill? He is three and five as a head coach against FBS teams. They've beat uh, Northwestern a couple seasons ago. They beat Northern Illinois last year. They've they've beat some teams at your level before. Is that is that been talked about in the program? Um, not necessarily like his specific record. Okay. Like that, that was the first time you saying that was the first time I'd heard about his specific record, but obviously just from watching the tape, you know, from the last couple of seasons, you know, I, I watched that Northwestern game. I watched, uh, that game against uh, NIU. And so it's, uh, you know, we're, we're well aware of what they're able to accomplish. Um, and so definitely, definitely not a game that you can overlook these guys. Uh, and they're they're a really quality opponent to uh, to uh, start the year off with. And it's like, man, sometimes I just wish we could just be like the SEC or something, and we can just schedule three cupcakes in a row. Where it's like, 
man, we uh, yeah, we, did we go down to FCS? Yeah, but we got one of the best FCS teams we could find. And then, you know, it's uh, – then you got to go play the ACC, then go to Laramie. Like, mm-hmm. what are we doing, Tom? But, um, <laughs> like, it's uh, – but no, I'm re- I'm I'm pretty excited to play them, and I've a just from watching them, you know, obviously I have a, I have a lot of respect for them on defense, and excited to play against them. Well, that's awesome to hear. Uh, one, uh, which one, real quick thought. We're gonna get to our listener questions momentarily, but you guys, you guys feel like you learned a lesson last year from Sam Houston State. I know that Sam Houston was technically an FBS team, but they were moving up from the FCS ranks, and they were your season opener a year ago, and. Uh, quite frankly, you guys struggled, and that kind of, I think, uh, told us a lot about that team. Do you feel like you guys learned from last year's struggles in the opener? For sure, for sure. And I think, uh, you know, ironically, like Sam Houston did a lot of – they they based out of some different fronts, but they moved a lot, kind of like Southern Illinois does and some things like that. And I don't think we – I don't think we were as prepared for that as we are this year. Um, and, uh, you know, I think uh, – <clears throat> well, I don't, I don't think – so it's it's always hard to see whether or not a first game is going to be an indication of a team's success that season or not, because there's there's always those teams that uh, you know maybe struggle in the first game and that first game maybe reveals some problems they didn't know were there, and they address them, and they move on and they play great the rest of the year, um, and then there's teams where it exposes some issues and they never get it fixed. Um, you know, which is kind of more the category we fell into last year. And so, um, you know, it's kind of hard to judge like what that first game performance is is going to be like. But uh, no, I definitely think I definitely think there's a lot of lessons from the Sam Houston game that have been carried over and, and, and talked about and uh, hopefully can be used as, you know, as something to help us prepare a little better for this first game.